सर प्लीज बिगिन वी आर लाइव हेलो हाँ सो वेलकम वेलकम मिस मेहुल so for my audience i want to introduce uh, uh, mr nilesh chahan who is uh, who is a senior process engineer in sadara chemical company saudi arabia now i will uh, give you a brief of his career profile so mr nilesh chahan completed his masters from nahi aawaz bahut aa rahi hai हेलो हेलो कैन यू गाइस कैन यू गाइस म्यूट योर सेल्फ गोनी ये आवाज कहां से आ रही है हेलो आमा ऑडिबल न्यू लामा ऑडिबल आई कैन आई कैन हियर यू ला पराग ओके ओके नो इशू सो सो लेट मी ब्रीफ अबाउट यू सो मिस मेल चौहान कंप्लीटेड मास्टर फ्रॉम एमएस यूनिवर्सिटी बड़ौदा विद पेट्रोकेमिकल एज मेजर एंड ही स्टार्टेड हिज करियर विद आईआईएम मुंबई एज रिसर्च असिस्टेंट इन मार्च 2004 देन ही जॉइंड अल्फा प्रोजेक्ट्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड एज प्रोसेस इंजीनियर Uh, in fact, around six six. Then later on, he moved to Dow Chemical International Private as an engineer in December two thousand seven, and he worked there till two thousand thirteen. And then later, he joined Sadara Chemical Company as senior as a senior process engineer in September two thousand thirteen, and he is currently working with Sadara Chemical Company as senior process engineer. Now, I have asked a uh, very brief about Samuel Chauhan. Uh, he happened to be my batchmate of MTech. We did our M Tech together from MS University, Baroda, in the year uh, 2002 batch. Right. So the achievements uh, which he has, so he has published an interna- uh, paper in uh, like international publication. Um, the title is "Can it study on dimension of ice cream? Ice cream resin in the presence of water as a solution answer." Then he is a member of Saudi Council of Engineers. He is a Six Sigma Green Belt certificate for the process optimization for the project at Dow Chemical, and was part of launching a startup for world scale chemical manufacturing facility altogether. Successfully commissioned world largest PMDI technology plant at Jubail, Saudi Arabia. So this is all uh, very short uh, brief about Mehul. So now uh, I would like Mehul uh, to uh, start the session. Uh, which is basically a session for our uh, engineering graduates from semester fifth and semester semester seventh. So I request you keep the concepts towards the uh, starting from the basic level so that they can relate what is going on. Because uh, our fifth semester students are currently not covered all the subjects uh, which may be which are done in the chemical level, right? So Mehul, please uh, session is handed over to you. Okay. Uh... first of all uh, thank you parag uh, for uh, those towering introduction uh, and uh, thank you uh, parul university and pu webinar for giving me this opportunity to share my insights and knowledge uh, regarding my my career uh, and as parag mentioned uh, me and parag uh, were batchmates uh, in our masters program at ms university baroda So I have a very special relationship with Farag, 
um and and we have uh, we have been together in mumbai as well when he was he was working with uh, thadumal sahani uh, college as well uh, so my association with para goes a uh, long way of more than 18 to 20 years i would say and and uh, when me and parag were talking uh, about uh, about uh, how the students and how the things are going on, and then speaking hello there is, there is a background noise but who is there that we have to find out <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Let me know when to start. I'll, I will move. Ah, I will tell you. Just wait. Just wait. Please keep your son. Hello. Yeah, it is better now. I'm only. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so I was saying that uh, myself and Parag uh, friendship goes long back, and when he said that let's uh, have a session about my career insights, uh, um, uh, being a process engineer in a multinational company, so then I could not resist to say no to Parag. So thank you, Parag, again uh, for giving me this opportunity. so um, as as parag has briefly mentioned about my journey uh, uh, let me say uh, in a in a little bit uh, uh, elaborated way um, about my my career progression and then the way i structured this uh, this session is i will take you of course start with the introduction and then i will i will uh, walk you through uh, what are the roles uh, a process engineer basically performs in the plant and what are the career options and things like that um, uh, for a core chemical engineer um, and and then i would move a session about what are the technical skills you will require and then uh, what are the other important skills that you need to have uh, in order to be successful in the industry uh, and chemical engineering is just uh, just uh, another just another uh, profession and, and my goal is to make you world class chemical engineer out of this out of this session okay <laughs> i'm joking it it doesn't happen over a, over over and one hour of session it takes its own time uh, it needs its own patience it needs its own dedication and interest okay so let's start with first things first and the first and foremost important thing i was thinking this will be a live zoom session which is of course it is a zoom session so keep your phones on silent uh, we saw a couple of uh, issues with background noise and uh, if you have any questions um, to the student who are from the p webinar uh, joining through facebook or who are in a class if you have any questions feel free to send it to parag uh, right away and and you can ask me so so my my objective is not to just uh, come here and give like one hour talk where you can't interact because it, learning doesn't happen that way learning is a two way process where where you ask the question and i ask you the relevant answer and then you grow understand and practice and then you develop so learning doesn't happen uh, in a one way communication and that's why if you have any question raise hand ask parag and parag can shoot that question to me and then i can answer it right away 
I would like to make it as interactive as possible. So the more questions you ask, more benefit it will be to you as well as to me um, by answering it, okay? This is not a technical learning session, so I'm not going to teach you um, the fundamentals of chemical engineering. I think it is, it is being done greatly at the college level by, uh, by the professors you are having top of the line professors and 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 on on this note i would like to say that you are really fortunate because you are born later in the generation where we used to be me and parag when when we were in college uh, i still remember me and parag going to library and trying to find out oh this journal has this formula this book oh oh this book is not available so we were not part of the internet era, because at that time, internet was just coming up. We had, of course, our computer labs and we had internet, but the challenges were far more difficult and different compared to what you have right now. The, the, the type of challenges have changed, but the approach to the solution still remains the same, okay? So this is not a technical learning session, so I'm not going to tell you how to design a pump or, or, or how to do, we can, we can do that, but that needs a separate session. So this is, that is not the goal of this uh, session. And, and of course, as, as the, as, as the uh, title itself says, they provide the knowledge uh, about the scope of process engineering uh, in chemical manufacturing industry. And if you still have, after this webinar, if you still have questions, you are more than welcome to get connected to me via LinkedIn or send a message to Parag uh, or send me a personal message on LinkedIn and I can answer you also. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I don't have really prepared a big, big slide, like a hundred slides to, to teach you about process. Uh, Hello. Okay, I have not prepared a prepared a slide of more than 100, 100 slides to tell you what is process engineering. But since you are a chemical engineer, there are multiple roles because your end goal as a, as a process engineer is to work with the manufacturing industry as a process engineer. As an engineer, the sky is the limit. The CEO of Dow Chemical Company is a chemical engineer. He doesn't do the chemical engineering work anymore, but he has started his career as a chemical engineer, doing the basic engineering thing. Sundar Pichai started as an engineer, and then the career progression is different. So if you talk about being an engineer, we build the world, okay? so. As an engineer, sky is the limit. But if you want to be in core chemical engineering, process engineering, here are your choices. You can be a plant improvement engineer, or you can be a plant troubleshooting engineer. Some people call it as TICA. Uh, if, 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 pardon me if you, are, if you are not familiar with the jargons what I'm using, ask me, okay? You can you can do as a startup engineer, so where uh, you you start up the plant, and you can solve those challenges as well. You can take part in commissioning. You can be a production engineer, which is a run plant engineer. So you run the plant. So when I was, or you can do a project process engineering, which is like basically uh, you can design a whole new facility so if you if you if you look at my career progression uh with god's grace i have touched almost all part of uh, uh what a chemical engineer is required to do so i started with my career in iit mumbai indian institutes of technology mumbai uh, as a research assistant so i uh, as a chemical engineer I wanted to study and then I become, I gave, I performed GATE and I had a good percentile in GATE and then I become a master's in chemical and spectrochemical engineering and then I moved to IIT Mumbai. IIT Mumbai was a time when I, I learned how the design 
of experiments in chemical engineering works so i did lot of lot of re reactive distillation um, experimentation so to say and then what i used to do was i used to put autoclave and then try to study the kinetic model and impact of what are the what are the inhibitors in that particular reaction rate kinetics and and the study of different uh, catalyst loading study of study of the reactant loadings um, temperature variations of the process pressure variations of the process humidity variations of the process so i learned a lot and lot of i did perform lot of chemical engineering research during one and a half year of my 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 iit mumbai experience thankfully my sir was really supportive and then what we used to do we collect those data we collect those data and go to our computer lab and then we put it in s pen uh, of course you must know about s pen uh, so we put those data into s pen and this kinetic chemistry was not that developed at that time i won't i won't go into very much detail fine details of it because if i go into detail then one hour will not be sufficient okay so i developed the reaction kinetics model and then studied the parameters and then published an international publication so i studied research during that time and then i realized that oh my god the the gap between uh, academics which is indian institute of technology mumbai and the industry is way wide than i was thinking uh, when i was doing my core research as i think parak can explain it better later to you guys that what i'm talking about the industry and that is that is where parag is trying to bridge the gap between the academics versus the industry and and when 20 years before that gap was way wider then compared to the western countries like america and europe has very 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 clubbed partnership between the academics and uh, the industry but in unfortunately in india that's not the case and i realized it uh, after doing one and a half year of my research and then i thought that okay let me go back to the core of process engineering mm, uh, and then i moved to a small epc company so if you see on the slide it is the fourth number project process engineering epc style and various roles so so that's the role i picked up in that role i was going to industries like some some clients say, for example closer to you is make money industries make money industry has a column problem like ammonia column has a problem and they call my boss hey i have this column problems it column is not performing column is not reaching to temperature reboiler is not performing condenser is not performing temperatures are not met product purity is not met or throughput is not met can you come and solve so my boss i was very young engineer so i was just very enthusiastic yeah yeah i want to solve this problem i used to go to field and then try to collect the data how they are running the plant what they are doing and then try to analyze it myself present my result to my boss and my boss of course he was like uh, 30 years of pdil experience eil pdil experience so he will tell me no 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 this is not how it works this is where you are wrong so so that was my my first learning uh, to to project style of process engineering and then we got a big project um, and then we performed basic engineering so that role basically tells you that how an ideal plant looks like and and what it needs to have but so so that's the role um, of project process i will come back to you on this one later as well um, after a couple of minutes so the first one is improvement in troubleshooting so that was that was also the role i was doing so alpha being a small company had an opportunity for me to do troubleshooting improvements so somebody will call atul will call hey we are we are going to capacity increase our columns or of our plants can you send somebody to to study the parameters and things like that so that is the improvement part of it so as a chemical engineer 
you are required to solve. So basically, you are the brain of the plant. I always say to my my young colleagues that you guys are the brain of the plant. Operation doesn't know what we, what they need to do because they they are busy with the different type of the work. Okay, and then when I joined the Dow Chemical, Dow was putting up a new plant with the GSEL. Uh, uh, and the and it was a chloroalkali plant in the hedge. Unfortunately, uh, Dow stopped uh, working on that that project, but we finished our basic engineering work. So at that time, um, I really developed all the process engineering, like I designed column, pumps, hydraulics, and and all sort of things. So in Dow, I learned different things different skills so in alpha as a small scale company you have a lot of people interaction uh, you work based on how your boss says and things like that but in bigger companies like multinationals where dow is is really multinational company it is a fortune i think fortune 500 as well i'm not sure uh, but in those companies you have work processes so you have a set of procedure to follow okay uh, we design in this 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 way so, so there, your skill set as a process engineer is different. It is not exactly same as 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 you do it in a small EPC company like Alpha Projects in Baroda. I worked for seven years um, in in Dow, and uh, by the time I I met uh, my wife uh, through arranged marriage, and that was also a, a personal side of uh the change i had and then i moved to sadara so basically uh, sadara is a manufacturing company uh, joint venture of saudi aramco which is world largest uh, oil oil producer uh, from kingdom of saudi arabia and it is a joint venture between dow chemical and uh, and sadara uh, and uh, saudi aramco so i get an opportunity uh, and i had opportunity to work with 42 different nationalities. So people were from America, Europe. In fact, in Dow also, uh, I was uh, I was on a deputation for one year to Europe. So I had a opportunity to work with Dutch, German, all are very different uh, nationalities and they have different personal values and a style of working. I'll come back to you on this one later in my slides. Okay, so there I had in in Sadara Chemical I had a commissioning and startup issue, uh, startup uh, experience, and commissioning and startup is like you are bringing all the big big equipments on on the fleet, and then it comes to comes to um, the ground, and then you erect them, and then you connect all of them, and then you basically start. With, it is like a Lego puzzle. puzzle. So, so that was fun. And when you start, uh, there are different type of challenges. So there you need to have, uh, there you need to have uh, management skills because if you don't plan it well, you can't do it. You can't perform. And in Sadara, we were uh, we were starting up 26 units at the same time. So that's really really big challenge. Lifetime opportunity. So I got it. So what I'm trying to 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 tell you. Uh, to young engineers, if you want to be in core chemical engineering uh, profession, it's a fascinating profession. You can still learn a lot. You can stay updated. And these are the four or five different styles of work you will be required to do. So I'm trying to give you an idea uh, of, of what are the roles, multiple roles to be performed by process engineering but at the nutshell at the basic of it is your technical ability your your brain your basic chemical engineering concepts which i learned in my 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 college are still applicable and those are those are fundamentals which never changes over a period of time so what i'm trying to say is and that leads to me <clears throat> my next slide um, which is like technical skills so if you want to be a holistic chemical engineer uh, working in a working in a manufacturing industry of course you need to have technical skills so what i'm trying to say is the core of chemical like for example 
um, number one is uh, design a pump, affinity laws. So how, if you change an impeller, if you increase the diameter of the impeller, what happens? You should be able to tell that to your client. Guys, if you change diameter from 250 mm to 275 mm, this is the impact. Your head will change or your flow will change or whatever. If I change RPM, for example, if I change the motor RPM, what will be the impact? That you should be able to tell as a chemical engineer, as a process engineer. <clears throat> so pump, design a pump. You should be able to know how a pump curve looks like. You should be able to, I, I, I'm going down to very basic details so that you can, you can be ready for the next interview as well. I want to be may, make this webinar as effective as possible. I want to give as much as information to you guys as possible so that you become a successful chemical engineer over a period of time, if you practice that, okay? So you should know how, how a pump curve looks like. What happens if the flow increases? What will happen to your head? For example, client comes with a problem that this pump is not working. What's the problem? Then as a chemical engineer, you should be able to go to the field, try to understand what the pump is doing, collect the basic data, try to get a feel of how the hydraulics of the pump is working. What is the RPM? What is the head? What is the capacity? What is the model number? What is the NPSH? What is the NPSH required? What is the NPSH available? What is the NPSH gap? What is the suction suction speed. Those are the basic fundamental things you should have complete understanding of. And if you don't have that understanding, you will struggle to find the solution. But if you have that basic understanding of how a pump works, you can answer like this. It's not that difficult. It is not like a rocket science that where you need to have like uh, develop something new it is available internet youtube are excellent sources of learning and you can learn a lot and of course you have your professors parag priya madam you can go and talk to them they will guide you how to design a pump second one is hydraulics as i was mentioning that somebody will say hey my pump is here and my 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 column is for example 30 meter away and 50 feet up my pump is not able to deliver my control valve is not working they will come with a problem and you are a solution provider so if you if you look at process engineering role uh, from the chemical industry perspective you are a solution provider basically if if a hydraulics has a pressure drop issue, you should be able to tell which pipe has the maximum pressure drop. You should be able to know hagen pozzoli equation by heart, delta P by L is equal to 4 FLV square upon GCD. That's, that's, that's the basic. And this equation I have learned when I was in my, in my undergraduate. When I, was, when I was sitting at your place in your bench, I remembered this formula and I still use that formula. Of course, now we have software, things have changed, a lot of comfort, a lot of things have, have developed, but that equation still remains the same. That equation is still able, is applicable. And that equation tells you how pressure drop is related to the velocity in the pipe. So what I'm trying to say, that you should be able to know how to design a pump. You should be able to know how, how the hydraulics, how to do hydraulics. Hydraulics is not like here you, here you just push up the things and there you get the things. What is going on? You should get a feel. And if you do that calculation manually first, by doing the assignments, by doing the whatever assignments you get, by building your understanding, you can you can easily tell that it is not a rocket science i don't want to scare you with so many equations but what i'm trying to say is 
that try to understand the basic concepts. And once you have the clear, clear basic concepts, it becomes so easy that you become an, almost an expert uh, in, in, in the plant and then people will respect you, okay? So the third point is, can you do the basic calculation using hands or Excel? You can use Excel. So for example, if, if in thermodynamics, um, you are required to know what is entropy, what is the enthalpy, and what is the Gibbs free energy, you can put those equation of equation of states uh, like NRTL, and then you can put it in Excel. Are you able to do that Excel calculation? It's very simple. By changing the fraction, a liquid, liquid mole fraction of a particular component, are you able to get what is the vapor composition of that particular composition uh, of that particular component using an RTL equation? It's, it's such a simple thing. And what happens if you use the uh, NRTL versus Red Kwong or you use Peng Robinson? What happens? Where, what are the limitations of those, of those models? You cannot use all the models everywhere because all the models have different assumption, different basics. So I remember my boss who was from, um, from US and he used to tell Mehul that we work on assumptions. All the engineering is based on assumptions. You should know the basis and assumption first. Clear understanding. And then you can build around it, above it. Okay. And then one of my, one of my, uh, I, I, I was delivering to one of the engineering college and uh, government engineering college. And one of the guy asked me, uh, Mehul, I, I, I need to learn softwares because I want to get a job in industry. So this is what came to my mind when I was, when I was developing this slide, that software or not. I, I, I talked about it before also, I'm talking now again, that if you don't have S Pen knowledge as a fresher, don't worry about it. As an industry process engineer, we don't want you to know S Pen just off the college. The basic thing we want to know from you, are you able to draw a pump affinity curve? Are you able to draw a pump curve? Do you have the clear understanding how uh, MCP delta T and UA, UA LMTD work? If you have those basic understanding, what happens if I change? Uh, so, what happens if I change uh, my my uh, heat exchanger from two pass to four pass? And what is the effect of small f on that equation? That's what we want you to know. If you have a basic knowledge of those things, you don't need to know software. Software industry will teach you. For example, if you join Reliance, Reliance will teach you how to run software. For example, if you join DAO, DAO will give you a rigorous training of how to run a software and, and, and like hydraulic software. There are many hydraulic softwares available, two-phase flow, gravity flow, uh, HDRI. For, there, are, there are N number of softwares. But as, as a college student, if you don't have software knowledge, don't worry about it. With full dignity in an interview, you should be able to tell, sir, I don't have any software knowledge, but if you tell me to draw a pump curve, I can draw the pump curve and I can explain you how this works. I can explain you how a heat exchanger uh, manually I can design. I mean, I still you remember, I used to, I mean, we used to do, me and Parag used to do a heat exchanger calculation in, in, in a piece of paper. And of course, you know that heat exchanger design is a, is an iterative process. It's not, it's not, because you arrive, you start with some duty, then then you arrive certain area, and then you put back those area, and then it doesn't, if it doesn't work, then you again go back and then change, and so, so things like that, a rating versus design. So if with full dignity in an interview, you can say, sir, I have no software knowledge, but I'm eager to learn how a software works, and I have the basic knowledge of process and chemical engineering, then I can, I can almost guarantee you anybody in industry will hire you. You need to have two things. Your basics should be clear. You should have learning attitude. That's it. That's the only thing that matters. And, and I'm telling you out of 20 years of my experience, these skills are basic skills which 
which are timeless. Okay, you should be able to tell what a Macbeth Hill method is. Maybe Macbeth Hill or a shortcut method, FUG method. I don't know um, you guys are taught FUG method yet or not. Probably it comes into your masters of chemical engineering. But you should be able to tell how a Macbeth Hill diagram looks like. You should be able to draw uh, how how number of theoretical stages or number of practical stages you arrive to. Similar story with the heat exchanger, reboiler, and condenser. You should be able to read on the documentation part. You should be able to read P and IDs, piping and instrument diagram. Probably they will teach you later, but you should be able to do those basic, basic, basic things. If you have that, if you have that knowledge, then then I am sure nobody can stop you from hiring and to become a successful chemical engineer slash process engineer. Okay, now, I mean, this is not the complete list, but what message I want to leave you right now with is that these are timeless skills. If you have this, and if you have right learning attitude, anybody in the industry will hire you. Okay, now moving back to what are the latest uh, or the the technologies in, 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 in market or in demand right now, or, or if you see in the future, things will be, so you should learn about how the cryogenic technologies work. So go to Google, try to find out how a cryogenic technology is like liquefied natural gas, what is cryogenics? Uh, because cryogenics is, is, uh, is now being used in the industry a lot more compared to previous. And the upcoming technologies like the battery technologies or, or the CCUS, um, technologies are, are going to be based on the cryogenics. So try to learn how the cryogenics works and what are the material of constructions you need for the cryogenics. Try to learn those things. How to, how to make hydrogen, how to make ammonia. Mm, uh, you go to Linde's website. Linde is, is, is a uh, world-known uh, manufacturer of these, these, these technologies. And what are the advancement in those technologies? In battery technologies, also, there is a lot of process engineering required. There is a course on the Udemy. Uh, you can go about how a batteries are produced and, and battery manufacturing plant um, are, are being set up across the globe. So I'm now, I'm now taking you from, from the school or college to what is going on at the global level. Okay, so now the new forces, we are in a turbulent time. New forces are coming up in the picture, so old, Old technologies are replaced by the new ones, and especially battery, battery cathode manufacturing, in particularly cathode materials. So in battery, you don't want to learn how a battery works, because, but you should be able to know what is a redox reaction. A redox reaction is basically electronic, electron transfer reaction uh, between anode versus, but you should be able to explain exactly in details. And if you learn what is a redox reaction, and how a cathode manufacturing works. There is a course on Udemy on cathode manufacturing technology. Learn that if you have those basic knowledge, you don't want to, I mean, we don't expect you to know the, the master of everything, but you should have a basic knowledge of how the cryogenic technologies work, how the, how the uh, from the syngas, how can you can make hydrogen or ammonia, LNG technology, liquefied natural gas technologies and 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 cathode manufacturing battery technology so these are the current trends uh, in in the process industries apart from running plants so for example if reliance is having a refinery of course they want you to know how a cdu vdu and whisk breaking unit and things like that works uh, or at least the basic knowledge uh, block diagrams i think hydrocarbon processing is a good good source there you can learn um, a lot about the latest in the in the technologies, but these are the really new ones, and I see I see a lot of jobs coming uh, in in this industry um, in this particular technology. So if you have some basic understanding of those technologies, I think that will work uh, for you um, as a, as a chemical process engineer. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean I do, I don't want to uh, take too long on this one. Uh, now let's let's move to the other important uh, other other really really important aspect of it that 
you are a chemical engineer you are going to be a chemical engineer but certain skills are timeless okay and 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 over a period of 20 years of my career uh, i have i have understood uh uh and of course thanks thanks to the my 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 coaches my mentors who who gave me um, an insight of 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 how a human being works rather than just a chemical engineer works and and you need to have the soft skills by soft skills i mean i i i don't want to take a long list of soft skills but what i understand uh, or or what i want to tell you that if you practice this three four skills over a period of time you will be successful in all aspect of your in of your of your of your uh, career rather than just being a chemical engineer so i'm just moving now to technical side to the soft side because technical is important and far more important is soft skills so i'm i'm really careful on my statement but when i say far more important i really mean it so first skill that you need to under uh, you need to inculcate over a period of time is a listening skill emphatic listening so 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 think about your conversation are you trying to listen to reply or you are listening to understand try to have a practice of listen to understand rather than reply because while you are trying in a conversation when you are trying to listen to reply you are not actually listening what what the other person is trying to tell you be it your friends be it your family be it your teachers be it your be it your your neighbors okay and then then there is a there is a very powerful technique which i learned in 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 dao when they sent me for a training to china that uh, in the native american uh, they they have a technique called a talking stick so they have a stick and when they want to discuss an important issue they all will gather so community leaders will gather together five six people they have a stick physical stick in somebody's hand and then the rule of the game is the person who holds the stick only speaks and rest all the people listen and he keeps they cannot intervene they cannot disagree so so many times what happens is i say hey i want to say this oh i disagree with this without thinking we say oh because we are humans right so we we feel oh uh, usually this guy makes nonsense points so without even listening we'll say oh no no i don't like this just listen first so or as a human being we always say we have favorites so we say oh this guy is making point yeah oh you are right no just first listen the important is listen so what coming back to the story so that's a talking stick they hold in their hand and the guy who is holding the stick is only allowed to speak the other guys cannot agree cannot disagree cannot make their own points because many times we want to prove our points yes i am saying is right i am saying is right you don't want to do that you want to have conversation if you are listening to reply that's the worst thing you can do to yourself okay so the rule of the game is have a stick and then until i feel if i am holding the stick until i feel that these people have completely understood what i want to say then i pass it on the stick to the next guy and then next guy speaks and makes his point clear and everybody else is silent this is a very powerful communication method you can practice amongst your friends amongst your family as well if you want to discuss an important point important issue which is hurting you have this you don't have to have a stick you can have a pen as i am holding it you speak whatever you want to say heart out 
and game of the rule is rule of the game is other people just listen 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 until you feel that they have completely understand you they have completely understood you and then you pass it on to the next guy he makes his own point and until he feels understood he doesn't leave the stick and and you feel that oh man then somebody will speak for us no it saves a lot of time because that's a important issue which is hurting you you don't want to do it for every every other thing but important issue when you want to the issue which hurts you the most you want to have this and then it will save you it will make you relieved from inside and once you have that relief you start communicating and once you communicate you build connection and when you build the connection you build relationship relationships is the most important thing in your career if you want to grow if you are best chemical engineer but if you don't have relationship people are not going to come to you so so most important thing most important soft skill you want to develop as a chemical engineer is listening skill listen to understand not to reply and if you have that that habit then other person will feel that yes he is valued you will feel relieved and then all the disagreements all the issues will transform into a creative energy and that energy will guide you to the next to the next solution process rather than the problem process okay so as an as an process and chemical engineer process engineer you need to have these skills let me move to the next one priorities <clears throat> first and foremost thing as an individual you need to prioritize the things okay first of all okay that, let me tell you a story uh, here that one guy was always telling man i don't have time i don't have time i'm i'm working this much morning to evening i have to reply to this emails i have to reply to this whatsapp i have to reply on this instagram i man this is so much to do i don't have time you guys are living in an information age where everybody wants you to be in a particular group everybody wants you to be part of their instagram followers everybody wants to be part you to be part of um part of a webinar for example i would say everybody you are bombarded with lot of information but as an individual as an engineer you should be able to prioritize so first of all and priority is not just the so what i'm trying to say here is that traditionally when we talk about time management priority is time management scheduling we were thinking about control of time but unfortunately we all have 24 hours only how can you bring more time you cannot bring more time you have to have right sleep you have to have right health so if you put your big rocks for example there is a um, there is a video to youtube you can go and and write down uh stephen kami a uh, kavi's uh, time management or so what you what i want you to do basically is write down what are the most important things you want to do in your in your career so for example the assignments you want to do for example you want to learn about how the pump works and things like that in your school and what are the most important thing you want to do in your home like talking to your mother talking to your father talking to a disturbed relationship talking to a friend who is not who is not talking to you try to write down those five important things you want to do and give your relationships the things which hurt you the most as priority and do that first so when my boss told me that hey my habit when i was a chemical engineer i said oh i have this 10 task to do okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 i write it down and then i said i will start with the easiest one and my boss stopped me right away he said no mehul you need to do 
the one which affects you the most and the other one which is having the most impact on your life like then he said okay so this is your most important client and this is the hardest thing to do you start with that if you take few steps in that direction you will feel happy you will feel satisfied and you will build it and that satisfaction will transform all your energy into a creative process of being a good human being so what i want you to do is write down that okay five things i want to do this five things as a as a, in relationship five things in a health i want to do this for example i have not gone to the gym for 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 a couple of months i have not played a particular game for example if you are good at good at sports you even if you are not good at sports you have to have physical exercise in your daily routine those are must and if those blocks are not right you cannot build an empire okay so write down what are the things that are important to you and then prioritize them okay this is number 1 must do because this is and then write down because this is having a most the most impact on my well being or on my life or on my priorities okay so what i'm trying to do is i want to shift your paradigm from being a time centric towards a relationship centric and if you prioritize those things like talking to your parents talking to your teacher talking heart out and sharing what you are feeling is very important with your friends so talk hey i want to talk to you just it takes 1 minute to start a conversation and then you can drag it long till you feel satisfied you can talk to your 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 teachers about it and they will they are the best people you are in a very you are in a very um, uh, very advantageous position that where you have your teachers you have your friends you have your family and 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 if you if you well get well connected with them then you can build on your technical skills but first foundation is your priorities prioritize what are the learning things you want to do what are the relationship things you want to do you want to talk to uh, you are you are being hurt by something you want to talk to your guru about it or you want to talk to your teacher about it you want to talk to your parents about it just go and talk make that first connection take take initiative and you will see that the people are really willing to learn people are really willing to help you and if you help yourself okay so first thing first family comes first health comes first friends come first loved one comes first and then those are the things which makes you emotionally stable and once you have that emotional stability technical stability technical learning comes on and that is the reason i want to have these particular slides in my presentation because these are the most important things just go and go and talk to somebody whom you are trusting then comes the last part of the things reply to instagram liking somebody's post whatsapp messages reply those things are small things if you if you put too much too much of 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 your phone whatsapp instagram mm, or this electronics around you then you miss the bigger rocks which are the most important rocks in your life so prioritize and your priority should be based on the relationships not based on the task to reply to a group it's it's okay if you don't reply to somebody on whatsapp you can always say yeah i was doing something i could not reply to you i'm sorry that's it but that won't hurt you but if you have your friend not talking to you you have disturbed relationship in the class you have Uh, if somebody is not talking to you you won't feel good about it and that will drain a lot of your energy compared to not replying to a whatsapp message okay so prioritize and prioritize your relationships as priority your health as a priority your mental well being as a priority 
and then comes the secondary things like instagram and facebook and things like that and the last and not the least uh, is weekly planning basically you need to sit down on every sunday take a cup of coffee or chai and then have a compass in your life be clear about what you want to do as an individual in your career and then that compass should always lead to your goal and then you write down in 30 minutes what are the most important thing in your life what you want to do in your life and then you write down in a small activities okay these are the important roles and these are the important activities i need to do and then plan them based on relationship as priority fix do that first and then do the easier part of the things like replying to uh, different different things so for example if i am a student i would put my friends my family my health my sports as priority so those are the things which i need to do what activities i will do in this week have a sunday 30 minutes sit down reflect on how was your week in week is a is a right time frame don't plan daily like every day you don't want to sit 30 minutes because you won't do it until you have habit of doing it week is a good plan plan this week i will learn about the centrifugal pumps i will learn about the cathode material battery technology i would learn about cryogenics things like that and then oh one of my friend is not talking okay i will talk to him straight on the face or i will tell somebody to 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 come with me and i will talk to him or her or whatever broken like relationships uh, you want to discuss and fix them first and believe me if you take first step things will work out it's very easy but you need to have practice so so prioritize them plan them write down how you will do it what you will do it based on relationship not based on the activities activities comes later okay and 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 i think that's 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 the thing i uh, i wanted to share with you guys so have a weekly planning write down not more than 10 activities just five big activities which you want to do with your families with your friends with the sports with your health that's it and then remaining things will fall and give your maximum time in a week in those in those priorities and and that will be that will be i think take you a long way if you practice this now it will take you a long way being a good chemical engineer being a good uh, human being being a good engineer uh, you are not just uh, i had some other slides as well but i'm not going to go through them because i think we have we don't have time it's 11:30 already so what what i wanted to leave you as a message is that chemical engineering core are important and your relationship your friendship your your teachers are most important your health is most important if you if you have this block set you can build an empire on it be it a chemical engineer be it a process engineer be it research be it project process engineer be it troubleshooter be uh be be it a improvement engineer or be it the ceo of a company and that is why if you notice i keep technical only one slide but i kept soft skill three slides because your soft skills your being a human um and a good engineer is the most important thing that you can have as an individual and this i am sharing based on my experience okay that will build your relationship once you have the relationships your your technical skills you can build on and if you still have any technical questions or any other questions if you need to talk to uh, if you feel you cannot talk to anybody you can still uh connect me on linkedin and just send me a message i will spend some time and talk to you over to you parag
Mehul, thank you a lot for sparing out time uh, from your schedule and uh, enriching our students. And it was really a wonderful lecture. The I will say wonderful because you had blended two two aspects. First aspect was technical, and uh, as we are as teachers, we always tell our students that the fundamental knowledge is very important. Learning will come through your efforts. It will not come through PPTs. It will come through reading books. So we are putting our best, but uh, somehow the students need to be motivated, and we are trying our best that they should learn the things from the book rather than the, taking shortcuts, which are very much everywhere. You know, like like you mentioned about our time, that how we used to refer journal. Now the time is gone, right? And we have all yeah. everything in in our hands. So that is the first thing. And secondly, uh, you have uh, told so much of uh, uh, the way engineer will has to behave in a workplace. So that that part is very important, like uh, responding, that not reacting and and uh, behaving properly, trying to understand people. So that that part is also very much important because these they all are young young students. They have different behavior set. Now they will be passing out soon. So they need to understand the work culture. Every work culture of the company is different. In India, the work culture is different. In Saudi, the work culture is different. So uh, accordingly, the students have to adjust. But uh, for them, this is really learning that uh, technique is important. Along with that. The technical, the soft skills is equally important, or I will say it is more important nowadays. That yes. companies look for more uh, people who are having better soft skills. Absolutely. Really, yeah. even teaching also, teaching also we see we want want people with good soft skills who can deliver well. So uh, it was an absolute pleasure for me. And uh, uh, the thing is that one student has asked me. So the session is very simple. He says you know, that if automation is going to come, what will happen? What will impact on the job prospects? So there is a student called Vamsi Krishna. He sends me a message on my WhatsApp, and he asks mm -hmm. that if automation is going to be there, then uh, what will the impact on uh, on the uh, human employment? So <laughs> I have okay. already replied to him, but uh, right uh, in in the sense. But I would like to know your. Point of view from Saudi Arabia type because uh, here if you see the um, uh, automation, every plant, every plant is automated only, right? Okay. Every production plant is automated only. We require uh, for the operational purpose we require people for many uh, manufacturing type or production department. And there is production and project department. Okay. So automation is coming is already existing. Automation is already existing. So uh, we have to uh, there, but we need people to run that automation. So right. people will be required anyhow, right? And secondly, okay. to make automation again, chemical engineers will be required. Uh, okay. So now I will request you to give your viewpoints. Uh, yes, uh, uh, it's it's a very good question, uh, uh, Mr. Krishna. Uh, thanks for asking. Uh, mm -hmm. I would give a little bit elaborated answer on this one um, and uh, start with little bit of uh, light moment. Uh, when I joined um, uh, as as a, chem a chemical process engineer in 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 company in Dow Chemicals, basically, or uh, uh, it is this example belongs to I think Reliance. Uh, they, they 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 were looking for uh, chemical engineers. So the best size was 30 chemical engineers, and when they bring the automation and things like that, they needed 40 engineers to maintain that automation. Okay, so number of jobs. Uh, of chemical engineers are not going to reduce uh, 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 by 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 automation okay and now in plants for example we dow mm, and sadara also we heavily automated our plant we are heavily automated our plant so mm, for example our columns runs on automatic system and now we are going to digital twin so digital twin is basically uh, robots or the computers basically take the feedback how the system is working um, and you you will you will know you will learn feedback and feed forward control in the uh, process control part of your academics so it's a constant feedback system feed forward system so so based on the temperature of a column what needs to done will be decided by by the computer okay we have we have top temperatures this much 
and then we need to have blah 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 i mean i mean there are so many criteria around it but then who will decide those criteria chemical engineers what computer should do when this situation arise that decision is in our hand that decision is chemical engineers that computers will not do for you of course computers are learning so we are not or as a industry we have not reached to a stage where computer will take over humans of course it will happen but it takes 50 years 100 years of time for computers to learn computers are fast learner they will learn quicker than us because we i took 20 years to learn this and computer may be learn it within 6 months but the rule of the games still remains the same computers can 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 ease your ease your work but cannot replace and and of course as a digital twin like s pen is working on it and we we are we are trying to also learn as an industry uh, how this digital twin things work like take the feedback from the plant and then automatically reply to the plant but basics of chemical engineering still remains the same and 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 the, and the problems are still unique because all all the plants are unique for example food industry uh, cryogenics refinery uh, upstream industries pmdi technologies which which i am part of like mdi isocyanates is completely different than polyolefin polyolefins technology aromatics is a different technology so in order to computers to take over humans it will still take 50 years by the time i think you will retire also mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, if if you come to chemical engineering world so so your question is relevant that it will take computers will take over humans because we are moving in that direction but it will not happen that quick or that soon and and still your basics are still uh, equally important and you will need uh, to run those spn softwares and digital twin and to maintain them you still need chemical engineers the people who can rationally analytically think and give commands uh, to computer what to do in in situations where they cannot work they can work like mundane things they can do but they cannot do they cannot they cannot yet replace the humans so it's it's not going to happen you when you go to uh, digital like youtube and all these things you will know that sofia is coming up and um, robots are coming up yes they are coming up uh, but the jobs will change its nature but basic still remains the basic so uh, if i am doing like daily troubleshooting my job will be more probably managing the spin software but still chemical engineering remains the same fundamental still remains the same so the type of jobs will be changing the type of the job which i have done last 10 years will change for sure but analytical thinking soft skills mathematical abilities are timeless they will still be needed believe me and trust me that they are still needed and you will still need them and you will have better jobs if you develop your analytical thing uh, analyzing the problem so when i said that you need to analyze a problem like pump is not working you need to go to the field and analyze the data like lot of data will be coming to you automation can give you the data for example the the power monitoring will tell you oh pump is drawing this much power temperature element will tell you every second how much is the temperature changing pressure transmitter will tell you what was the pressure every second but it is your duty to analyze have mathematical ability analytical ability does this make sense and if you have that ability that applies to to any anywhere you go mathematical ability is still very important and will remain timeless trust me computers will not computer can do your calculation faster but what to calculate that you will be telling you will still be telling that so 
of course computers are coming digital twin is coming but not to the pace uh, as as you think and your jobs will be changing but you will still be required if you have analytical abilities mathematical abilities soft skills if you have that you will still be required in the market and you will have a lot of jobs so develop yes, those skills uh, and, and 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 i think that uh, there is there, there is nobody uh, in this industry as as i know uh, not even in india i'm telling you in in abroad europe and america people will hire you for your technical ability and now even workplace are becoming remote so they will also uh contact you if you have the right uh, uh right skill set i hope i answered uh, your question okay. uh, it was a, it was a very elaborate answer and uh, i think uh, it is answered very well also that the humans uh, will always have a chance to over the machine machine is always going to help help us but they cannot replace human uh, it is a long way to go so a long way to go so i think uh, uh, our time is up so we will thanks a lot for being okay. here i hope uh, our students are engaged i will collect the feedback from the students also and let you know that how the session was and we look forward to future sessions if our students are interested in some other topics okay okay so thank no you. problem thank you a lot um, uh, i would be more than happy uh, to to uh, to get connected and and yeah. if you guys have any questions uh, let parag know or just uh, connect me on the linkedin yeah. i would be happy to help you guys sure. out okay uh, sure, sure. Uh, with this uh, thanks uh, parag for arranging a session yeah. uh, and it was really pleasure uh, connecting back to you guys yeah, it's a pleasure for me so <laughs> pleasure okay. for me also thank, yeah. thank you thank you and thank you very much and bye bye bye, bye. bye. see you have a good day